In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to play five licks by some of the biggest names in rock guitar, so stay tuned. <laughs> Hey there, this is James for James Chipotle Guitar and welcome to this video lesson. Today I'm going to show you how to play five great licks which you can start to use in your own solos and they're coming from the playing of some of the biggest names in rock guitar. Now if you want the tab to these licks and the lesson notes, click on the link under this video and I'll send you a copy of my rock guitar bundle. It's got everything from this lesson plus loads of other stuff from some of my other rock guitar lessons on my YouTube channel. Click the link underneath and grab your copy of that right now. All five of these licks are based around the blues scale and minor pentatonic scale pattern. This is one of the most commonly used scales in rock guitar. Let's take a quick look at how to play that scale pattern in the key of E. We're gonna play 12 to 15 on the E string. We're gonna play 12, 13, 14 on the A string. 12 to 14 on the D string, 12, 14, 15 on the G string, 12 to 15 on the B string, and 12 to 15 on the top E string. Right, let's take a look at how to play his first lick, and it's similar to something that Tony Iommi of Black Sabbath plays in his Paranoid solo. It's a great one to start off with, let's have a look at it. So here's what I do here, it's an E minor pentatonic up at the 12th fret. I'm picking the 15th fret and pulling off to the 12th fret. Then I go to the B string at 15, and I'm gonna give that a little bit of a bend. Then I'm gonna pick it and pull off to 12, where my first finger is on the B string. Then we're gonna grab the 14th fret on the G string and bend it up two frets. Next, I'm gonna play the B string at 12th fret, and the top E string at 12th fret. Notice how I kind of roll my first finger across those two strings to separate out the notes so that I don't get this. Get the notes nice and clean and they don't ring together. The next thing we're going to do in this lick is we're going to play the 15th fret on the B string. We're going to pull off to our first finger at the 12th fret. And we're going to grab that G string note at the 14th fret and bend it up again. Now we're going to kill it off with our right hand and let it down, pick the G string at 14 and pull off to 12 before playing the 14th fret on the D string, 12 on the G string, 14 on the G, bend that up and pick it three times. Let it down and play 12 on the G string.
slick, similar to something that Angus Young plays in his solo on You Shook Me All Night Long. It's in G minor pentatonic, and he's moved it up to the 15th fret. Now, just in case you don't know, any scale that can be played at one of these frets below the 12th fret, if we move it up 12 frets, we get the same scale shape up an octave. So you might be familiar with, for example, your G minor pentatonic scale at the third fret. What Angus has done here is moved it up three frets above the 12th fret to the 15th fret, and you can play the same scale shape and the same licks and everything, and you just get them up an octave higher. So it's kind of a way to kind of recycle some stuff that you might do down here. You can just play it up an octave higher and get a slightly different sound. Let's take a look at the lick anyway. I'm going to play the 17th fret on the G string and I'm going to bend that up two frets. You know, so I'm using my second finger for that bend. You might prefer to use your third, see what's most comfortable for you. Now I'm going to play 15 on the top E string. 15 on the B string and 18 on the B string. Now we've got a pre-bend. Now pre-bend is where we bend up the string, then we pick it and we hear it let down like this. Here we're just hearing the, we're just hearing the bend being let down. We haven't heard it being bent up. There's that pre-bend there. So we're grabbing 17 and bending it up to 19, then picking it, letting down and playing 15 on the G string. And then playing 17 on the D string. Then we've got some double stops. We're going to play the 17th fret on the G and the B string and 15 on the G and B string. A double stop, just in case you don't know, is two notes played together. And that's what we're doing here. Two strings played together in this case. The G string at the and the B string at the 17th and then at the 15th fret. So we've got this so far. Now we're going to come back to that 17th fret bend. We're going to bend it up and hold it. Then using our third finger, we're going to play 18 on the B string. Then do that again, bend it up. And hit the B string again at the 18th fret. Keep holding the bend up because now we're going to pick it and let it down. And play 15. So we get... Before playing 17 on the D string. It's quite a lot in that lick, so let me just play that round for you a few times so far. We got this. Now to finish it off quite nice and easy, we're going to play the 17th fret double stops on the G and B string, and then on the 15th fret and then do that again. Now this lick used by everyone, but one of the classic examples where you can hear it is in the Sweet Child of Mine solo by Slash. Um, we're going to play it up in the key of E using E minor pentatonic, similar to where Slash plays it in that solo. Let's have a look at what we're doing here. Now it's made up of some repeating fragments really, this lick. We're picking the B string and bending it up two frets at 15. Then we're playing 12 on the top E. 15 on the B string and pulling up to 12 on the B string. Now we're going to do exactly the same thing, but we're going to bend the 14th on the G string instead of the B string. 
So let me play that for you. We bend the 14th fret up on the G string, then 12 on the top E string, and then 15 pulling off to 12 on the B string. Now when we play this lick, we play the first part and then we play the second part. And we're gonna do that three times like this. So we play the first bend and the second bend, then do that three times. And then we have this little ending bit. And for that, we're gonna bend 14 on the G string up, 12 on the B string and then the top B string, a bit like something we saw in the first lick. Then we're going to pick 15 on the B string and pull off to 12. Grab 15 on the top E and bend it up two frets. So if I play that for you really slowly, this is what it looks like. Now this next lick is in the style of Zach Wilde and it uses the E blues scale. Let's look at how we play this one. We're gonna pick 12 on the B string, hammer on to 15 and pull off back to 12. And then I'm gonna play 15 on the G string. Now that's our blues scale note. So we're adding in that blues scale note which is a slightly different sound here. So we do that. Then we do the same thing, except instead of playing 15 on the B string, we're gonna stretch up with our little finger to 17 and do the same lick. Still going to that blue note there. So we end up with this. Now we're gonna do that again. And now we're gonna do this. So let's look at what we do there. We're gonna play 12 on the top E string. Pick 15 and pull off to 12. Play 14 on the G string. Now often we'd bend this note, but here we're not. We're just gonna play it straight. 12 on the B, 12 on the top E. And then we're gonna grab this double stop. 12 on the B string and 14 on the G string. And we're gonna bend the G string up and keep the B string note where it is. Now Zach would often play that lick kind of pretty fast, maybe something like this. Okay, but it will work at any speed, and it's a really cool little sound. And you also have the added bonus with this lick of learning how to do this little stretch up here, because you can add that into some other sort of rock blues licks that you like, and just kind of expand them and build on them a little bit. So that's a cool little idea from Zach Wilde's play. Let me play it one more time for you. Okay, this final lick is one of the most challenging ones in this lesson and it's from Randy Rhodes and it's very like something he plays in his Mr. Crowley solo on the first Ozzy Osbourne album, Blizzard of Oz. Okay, now let's take a look at how we're gonna play it. It's in D minor and it's using D minor pentatonic which we play at the 10th fret. Okay, so it's the same scale shape we've been using in E 
just move down two frets, which turns it into a D minor pentatonic scale. Now, let me play the whole lip for you very slowly. Quite repetitive, this is just kind of cycling the same little ideas round and round a few times. Here's the first bit of it. Okay, so it's kind of in two halves. Let's look at the first one, and it's similar to some of the devices we've seen in some of these other licks. So what I'm doing here, I'm bending 14, sorry, not 14, I'm bending 12 up on the G string, and I'm gonna use my second finger for that. Now, some of you might prefer to use your third. Sometimes I'd use my third for this, but in this particular case, it seems a bit more natural for me to use my second, so that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna grab that 12th fret, I'm gonna bend it up two frets. Now, B string at 10, and top E at 10. And as I've mentioned earlier, you want to roll this first finger so that you separate out these notes and you don't get this. Sounds kind of messy. So we want to roll this first finger and separate out those notes. It takes a bit of practice, but it's well worth the effort because it can really clean up your playing. And we use these kind of licks quite a lot for, for a lot of stuff we play. So here's that first bit again. Now I'm going to play 13 on the B string, and then I'm going to pull off to 10 on the B string. Now the first half of this lick is basically playing that idea four times, like this. Okay, so it's the first half of that one. Now the second part of it is using a kind of fast alternate picked idea. Now if your picking isn't that great, you might have a bit of problems with this, but you know, that's okay, you can try and adapt it using hammer-ons and pull-offs, which might make it a little bit easier. Or alternatively, use it as a picking exercise, because it's a really cool picking exercise to develop your alternate picking. So adapt it if you want, but you know, rather than not use it because it's a bit hard, find a way to make it work for you. But also see if you can play this one, because it is great for your right hand picking. Okay, let's look at what we're going to do here. I'm going to play 13 on the top E string. I'm going to play 10 on the top E string. I'm going to play 13 on the B string. And then I'm going to pick 10 on the top E string three times. So we get this. Now in case you're wondering how I'm picking that, I'm using strict alternate picking on that, which means down, up, down, up, down, up. It isn't the only way to do it, and there's some people who would do it differently from that, but that's how I like to do it, so that's what I'm doing here. But again, adapt it to suit the way that you play. Now the second part of this, uh, second half of this lick is almost the same, except we do this. So we go 13 on the top E, 10 on the top E, 13 on the B string, 10 on the top E, but instead of picking that last note three times, we come back to the B string and pick 13 down to 10. So let me join those two fragments together because that basically makes up the rest of this lick. We have the first one, then the second one, then do the first one again, and the second one again. And that's that whole lick. So let me put that together for you now nice and slow so you can really hear what's going on. So what are we going to do with these licks? Well, learn them, practice them, practice using them in your solos. But after that, see if you can use the ideas that make them up as a way to generate your own ideas, okay? Dissect them, take them to pieces and start changing them, creating variations, and you'll be really surprised at how many ideas of your own you might come up with just by taking one of these and experimenting a little bit. Really important to experiment 
and use the lick because that's how we absorb it into our playing and it starts to come out naturally when we solo and naturally when we improvise. So that's about it for today. I really hope this lesson has been useful for you. Don't forget to grab your rock guitar lick bundle by clicking the link under here and you get the tab and everything to these licks which will really help you get the most out of this lesson and help you to work through them at your own pace. That's all for me today then, so please remember, subscribe to my channel, and if you've got any comments or questions or anything you'd like a lesson on, leave it below, because I do check all my comments, and I will try and get back to you. So anyway, thanks a lot for watching. I hope to see you again very soon in another one of my videos. So take care, and bye for now.